One of the last prophecies to be fulfilled before the return of Christ is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, where it states, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. As many are aware, today we see the majority of religions, including some Christian denominations, are proclaiming that prayers to the dead are acceptable and should be done often if the dead are, in fact, considered a saint. Most teach that when a person dies, they go to a spirit world where they can be contacted by us in prayer or by a psychic or a spirit guide in a seance. Some also teach reincarnation where the soul goes from one life to the next forever in the hopes of cultivating enough wisdom to become perfect and therefore eternal in nature. Then there are those that teach the spirit of the deceased can actually haunt people if the deceased has been wronged in some major way in their mortal life. And finally, some teach that dead saints are allowed to come back from heaven physically appear unto us and warn us of mortal dangers if we don't heed their heavenly warnings and follow their advice. One of these denominations even goes so far as to claim that the mother of Jesus Christ himself appears from time to time to relay messages from heaven. Let's go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about where we go when we die. We're going to the Bible because these are churches and religions we are investigating. If we were investigating something someone told us about how to properly tune an engine, we would go to the mechanic's manual of that particular engine to find out if what was being said or done to the engine was correct and acceptable for that engine type. Well, these are churches we're dealing with, which claim to be teaching us from what the Bible says about these topics. So let's see if they're right. In Psalms chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, it says, My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake, for in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? The psalmist is praying for deliverance to arrive before death here because he knows he won't have the ability to remember anything from the grave, nor can he give thanks from the grave. In Psalm 115, verse 17, we find that the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Psalm 146, 4 says, His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 5 and 6 say, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten, also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. In Isaiah, we see that King Hezekiah was sick, and Isaiah told him that he was about to die. The king turned his face to the wall and prayed. In his prayer, he says the following. Isaiah 38, verses 18 and 19. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. It appears rather plain here. They can't remember. They can't thank anyone. They can't praise God. They can't think. They can't even dream because the verse says, His thoughts perish. All their abilities have perished. The dead know not anything. Notice the last verse shared where it said, Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. The Bible is stating that the dead can in no way take part in anything under the sun after they die. Pretty plain, is it not? If the Bible is saying the dead can't affect anything that happens here on earth, why are people still praying to these dead saints when the dead can't hear them? Why do people still believe in hauntings, seances, or apparitions? They believe it because they never read in their Bibles the truth about these things. They just trusted their church leaders to tell them truthfully what the Bible says, and they failed. Who or what are these people seeing at these seances or hauntings and apparitions? Now, some churches believe that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is showing up in apparitions around the world. Many also believe that paintings or statues of Mary are actually bleeding real blood or crying real tears. Does this mean Mary is not only alive and well, but now trapped inside these statues somehow that are made by men? How can this be? Does not the Word of God plainly state that the dead can in no way affect anything that happens here on this earth? If these apparitions aren't Mary, then who are they? You might want to go to the website at remnantofgod.org and check out the That's Not Mary page for the whole story on this. I'm sure you're wondering, just where do we go when we die? Now don't go running to get this answer from your preacher, your teacher, your friend, your pastor, or your priest. Just go back in your Bible to find out. 
It is where you should always go when you're in question. However, if you do at times have to go to a person for answers, always verify it in the Word of God before making any final decisions. Don't trust me or any man. Go to God's Word for the final answer, and you can never go wrong. So, where do we go when we die? Psalm 13, verse 3 says, Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. The Bible refers to death as sleep. During this dreamless sleep, his thoughts perish. So, is it possible to affect the lives of others or carry on normal day-to-day -day activities in normal sleep? Well, I think not. In the book of John, we find a situation where Jesus himself refers to the dead as being asleep. In John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14, it says, Jesus speaking, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. The disciples thought when Jesus said Lazarus was sleeping that he would be okay. So Jesus had to plainly explain to them that Lazarus is dead. Before going on, I must interject as to the main reason Jesus calls death sleep here. It is because he knows that everyone will awaken one day out of death as we awaken each morning from sleep. Some will awaken to eternal life and others will awaken to be destroyed in eternal damnation. In John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29 it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. 